Okay. We are here today with Double Up Smoke Shop owner and Sassy Galaxy Lounge's owner, uh, Mr. Saad Akbar, down in Tampa, Florida. What's up, Saad? What up? What you do? Home team in the building. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, today's interview is just going to get a little bit of information and history behind the Double Up Smoke Shop and Sassy Galaxy's Lounge. And we're gonna learn about the products that they have on sale, on display, what they offer, what they've done. You know, get a little roundabout information of this this small business in Tampa. So, how long has you got, have you guys been operating? Um, Tell us a little bit about it. What a, what a lounge is for is like a whole different store. What it's for the smoke shop. The idea really came like during the pandemic time when they kind of shut us, that shut the lounge part down. So it's like, hey, you know, that don't stop bills and. Right. And things from having to be done, so we came up with an idea together as for starting a smoke shop. Then when the idea started, you know what I mean? It was like, well, how are we gonna start a smoke shop here on the line? So okay. we just came up with a blueprint, and then just and just started researching, checking into it. Then it just it was just a matter of time before we started buying product in. Then as we seen it work, but when we started, it was like we were kind of blessed because the way we started, it was like we went to different seminars and different events. You know what I mean? And we were able to different, like, operate and network with different people that kind of led us into the direction of like, oh, not only you can have a smoke shop, you can have a smoke shop and have all your own products in it. You know what I mean? So it was just a base of researching and, and, and start from nothing. To get it going. Yeah. So did it take a lot to get the um, smoke shop to where at least it could become what the legal standards of what they make y'all operate the realms and ramifications? Yeah, that, that's like the hardest part. You know what I mean? It's always some paperwork. You know what I mean? But that's the discouraging part for us. You know what I mean? They want us to get to a point where you feel like, oh, this is impossible. You know what I mean? With no, it's like anything else you want to do. If you really want to do it, you're going to sit down, you're going to research. You know what I mean? Then it's, yeah, it is a couple of dollars, but it's nothing that's not reachable for anybody. You know what I mean? It's just a process. Okay, well, that's good. That, now that's good. That was information that people need to hear because, you know, most of the time it's the paperwork that keep people out of business and at least going into business for themselves. Right. It'll work for people forever. Right. But, you know, we need to be more um, opportunistic when it comes to business opportunities. And you took advantage of it during a crisis. Right. Right. So how, even with the crisis situation and, you know, knowing that you still got to function and run other aspects of your life, how were you able to maintain during the crisis with your businesses? That's just what it was. The marketing part. It, it, it was the drive. Okay. You know what I mean? When the crisis did hit, it's like you're going to be two type of people. You're going to be one of those people that sit in the house and mope about all the things I can't do and, and what's going on. Or you're going to be one of those people who say, hold on. I, this seems like a trap to me, you know what I mean? You trapping me inside of my house, that's like jail. That's too much like jail to me. So it was like, to a point where, I guess the hustle mentality came out of um, me me and Miss Evan, we just, we just ran with the idea and ran with the thought of like, hey, let's try this. Through trying it, you know what I mean? And through, and through doing the research, the paperwork, you, we just end up fumbling and realizing like, our biggest thing was we realized we was 1%. The business that we in, we are 1% as black people, black people, you know what I mean? You got Arabs, you got Koreans, you have Caucasians. So that was kind of a help, but a hurt. It was a help at first because people looked at us like, what are y'all doing here? Because a lot of these places you go to, you got to have these lights, you got to have this stuff. So it was like, what are these people doing here? Then when you start talking and communicating with other people and they realize, hey, these people are business minded like just like me. Some of them are gonna feed you the game and some of them gonna put a wall up. You know what I mean? And that was the to me that was the encouragement. You know what I mean? The one or two people that did put that wall up and gave us a hard time, that was the driving me like, okay, I'm gonna show you to the one like, damn, this person could be open minded, you know what I mean, and see my vision, you know what I mean, and wanna see me be successful. You know what I mean? So it's a little bit of both, the good and the bad, just taking that in and making that you drive. And it's very true that lounges are not um, in the black community as far as um, black people running them and operating them. We mostly visit them right. and, right. you know, come and patronize them or whatever. Is your um, business mostly geared toward the black community? Is that more of your population? Well, the key, to be honest, we're in a we're in a black part of town to where I feel like I'm not just gonna say one ethnic of people, but they're not at one point in Tampa, 
this is the only place where black people could own a business. Right. Now it's to the point where we are one of the few still black owned business or property yeah. owners here. You know okay. what I'm saying? Now it's to the point they're trying to, I call it a reface. You know what I mean? The neighborhood. You know what I mean? You take it where we used to stay and you try to clean it up. Cool, that's fine. But clean it up for the people that's here. Don't push them people out to bring a whole new face of people. So my biggest fight now is trying to be here and educate my people that, hey, this is the reason why you should be coming here. You know what I mean? And through that, you, you go through ups and downs with our own people. Because I'm going to have my young brothers that feel like they, hey, well, just, they, they come from what I come from. They were just like me. I've been there before. You gonna feel like you could come here and hustle and do this and do that, and I'm gonna right. tell you no, because I done had to sacrifice. You know what I mean? And I'm gonna tell you I understand. I've been where you at. Don't give up on what you're doing and find a right. new way to do it. But you can't do this here. Not here. Then you gonna have people who gonna feel like, oh, you from the hood? I'm supposed to get a deal every time I walk through this door. No, well, you, no, that's, you don't. And that's big in the black community. Right. Like everybody always want a deal in the black right. community. Right. But you spoke on something very, um, I'm only going to bring this up briefly because you hit it, um, the gentrification. Right. The neighborhoods are definitely being gentrified. Right. You got a lot of different faces coming into right. the communities that right. want to take over right. and make money off of people who y'all trying to make money off of or right. even do business with. Right. Um, it's much harder to do business in our own communities, it seems. Right. But when another person comes in and take over the business, right. It's filled with people. Right. I don't see, right. like, from what I've been noticing with you guys, because I've been following y'all page for a while, so I knew this has been for a while. I just didn't know how long it took right. to get everything right. to the process. Right. But knowing that um, that this, you know, that you are at the peak of where you are now, yeah. would you change anything? Would you do it all right. over again? Would, would like, to a sense, yes and no. The adventure, the experience, and the driving me. I would do it totally the same. Okay. But the reality of what you saying, I wouldn't have never told a lot of people that me and her own this place. I would have got another face to run it. And that's sad that I got to say that, but that's the same drive now why I come in here every day and I won't stop. Right. Because I'm going to make it to where you see a face like mine, being able to say, you own this, I get more thrill out of that than young brothers that walk by. Right. The ones that, that, that got to go to high school, that got to go to and they like, you own, yeah, you can own this too. Um, sometimes you got to be the example and not reap all Even the benefits, right? Even and not and not reap all the benefits. But I know, guess what? Our kids can reap the benefits. Right. You know what I mean? Our future grandkids can reap the benefits. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm already blessed. You know what I mean? I'm blessed because some some people some people in our family, guess what? We was able to reap the benefits. But somebody got to step up and say, Hey, I want to play this position. I want to be here. You know what and I mean? And not be afraid of the fact that business may not go how you think it should go right. because of the face behind it. Right. And it is it, it is people. I've seen um, so many people say, and I've heard so many people say, I will not put my face on my business right. um, because it may hurt me more right. to do that. I feel like. It, those just aren't the, not the people you should be catering to. Right. Because right. um, right. exactly. I feel like, you know, when you have to change you and, right. and low buy you and low buy yourself, so, right. then it's almost like, damn, I can't right. seek the people who I'm catering to because they don't like what they see. Right. Versus the fact that right. more, more of it is that they just don't want to be happy for you. They don't want to celebrate the fact that you're doing something different. And what it is, I think, is is itself because they not just celebrating you they celebrate when they fail to realize you're going to be celebrating the struggle that right. all of us made it out of right. somebody who you can reach out and touch and say hey man this man here really from the bricks this man really decided to say i just seen this man good and his bad and he really decided to say hey this one man is life and i'm gonna try this and it's working for me correct that right there should be celebrated you know what i mean but us as people we don't know how to understand or we don't know how to embrace it the, 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 the thing or that mindset of dang, this is how this brother used to be. Yeah, you know what I mean. But it's, and it's growth yeah. because yeah. Every, we 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 weren't always as you know? wise or as knowledgeable right. as we are about things now. You know, right. when people try to tell us certain things, we thought we knew things. That's right. But also, even when we knew we didn't know, sometimes we knew how to shut up and listen. Right. No, nope. a right. lot of people now don't. Right. They don't know how to close their mouth and say, okay. So we're gonna, now we're gonna going to jump into a little bit of showing me some of what you got to offer here. Right, right, right. But before we do that, 
can we bring Ms. Pooh just over and she the interview for one second? Can we get a, 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 get a pigment? Hey, 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 hey I'm gonna tell y'all what this is like to me. This is like, uh, I'm gonna put it like this. Y'all know how y'all know how cash money is baby. Y'all always see baby yes, face. Yes. But his brother Sugar Sugar Slim, he be in the back and you know Sugar Slim don't say much, but Sugar Slim keep it keep it working and jerking. And see, she here, so she got to tell us about this drink. What's up with this? What's this? Okay, this the beet juice. So this is actually got this mild special. I'm not gonna say you what's in it, but it's multiple bottles. Multiple bottles. Multiple bottles. It tastes good though. Mm -hmm. Sweet. <laughs> you like that? Really good though. So Miss Pooh, he said you you like you the you the 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 body of work behind all of what's running up in him. I know you y'all do this together. But we both. Yes. So I ain't gonna take it away from him because there's sometimes where it's like I'm not gonna make this work. Or this more on you. You know, or you gotta sit down and you gotta learn it too, because I'm not gonna be there. Teamwork from mom and dad. Well, you know what I mean? From family. You know what I mean? From family. We don't have that Bill Cosby family matters no more. We got bullshit reality show. This man, man, my kids watching this. My daughter's watching this. They think this cool, but that all of us want. Okay, yeah, we want to be nice. We want to have nice things. But the way you get them in the mindset, we got to change that before we have somebody coming to our establishment talking about that and they're going to spend some money with us. I got to change your mindset. When you walk by here, I got to let you know, hey, bro. So you finna go spend with the Arabs. <laughs> no, I really got to do this. You finna go spend with the Arabs, bro. I got to be almost that street. But guess what? You might cuss me out, but two weeks later you go, hey, bro, you know what? They treated, hey, my, my sister went down there to get some diapers for a child, and it was $25. And when Dixie was closed, and Walmart was closed, and she ain't had it. See, y'all don't think, they don't think like that. They think this a game. This ain't a game. It's for real. And when people start realizing for real, we'll start taking our black genesis and our history for real because it's not a game. Well, it is the education. You said a key mm -hmm. thing when you said that um, your kids watching this, your kids watching that. And it's what we allow our kids to see because not only are they watching the reality show version of what they think it should be, they get to see the everyday version of what you all have to sacrifice and put up with to go through and provide. So they're not just in a fantasy world, just thinking that reality TV is just real, they see right. what it takes to operate. Like my mom and I might have some money, but it took this and this and this to get right. that money. You know right. what I'm saying? You gotta show them, and that's the education behind it. You're not just right. letting them think that y'all just money grown trees. You're not making them see that. Y'all right. have to show them from the beginning how this was built, how this was built, and how y'all got here. Right. So it's, it's important, the foundation is always important. If, if, if that concrete laid, Right. You get, you know, a civilized growth. Right. If not, then it's gonna be messed up. Look pretty close. Right. That's really good. Really that. So, okay. Thank you. Um, who? <laughs> you showed your face, girl. <laughs> All right. So I tell, show us what's All going right. on. Cause you need to be taking control of that. You hang your tired yet? Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna start with like some of these products over here. Like what we do try to do is like we say the black music. So. What, what me and um, what me and Pooh did do, we decided like all the stuff that we do sell, we're gonna try to sell majority African American stuff. That's all I know. You know yeah. what I mean? But it starts with little stuff like this, like our sister. We call her Auntie Smokey. That's gonna that's the name of her company. But she make all the trades we have. 
You know what I mean? All oh, these so trays. All these trays are, are handmade by this young lady. This is another little set she had for your wine and glass. Yes. Okay. Now that's that's really dope. So you're promoting small businesses right. within, within a small within business. Within a small business. Okay. Right. right. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the next products we sell is my sister, <laughs> Akila. Uh, but the name of her company is My Wootsie. And uh, she does a lot of um, health products. Uh, she does CBD products as far as bath oil, body oils, and then some of them come without the CBD. But this one that my sister has, she got body rubs, lotions, uh, health products. Natural yeah, products. All yeah. natural products. I got some of her stuff from a um, pop up shop she was at one time. So I definitely know she be getting it down. This is a, um, another brother product. He from Tampa. Okay. Man, this brother, he he, he African American brother, this brother sell his own water. You know what I mean? He really sell his own water, so y'all check him out. You know what I mean? In Tampa, does he In ship? In Tampa, yeah, he ship. Okay. This, this young, we watched him. Thank, what's it yeah. Thanks for that. Okay. Thanks for that. Yeah, we watched this young brother uh go from the top. But um, then we got other little accessories. We got um uh, all your uh, as I call them, all the traps matter <laughs> products. <laughs> You know, you look, we got little caps. We got little, now I'm gonna tell you about these little products. For real though, like the, um, these products, the CBD products. Okay. But like for brothers who like energy drinks, um, brothers who like to work out or whatever, it's like you say, it's an education pro process. You know what I mean? Brothers who like to be in a the gym, these process, these little products are good. Um, I got into them myself and they just like health supplements. You know what I mean? And and I guess they can give you the mindset of, of, of you getting a buzz or whatever from CBD. They don't get me uh, nothing, but it do, it do help me with like working out and stuff like that. Okay. Then we got other little whatnots, bones, trays, all the all the type of cigars you would need, CBD products. Um, that's pretty much it. Well, everything in here looks really, really nice as far, especially the handmade stuff. Like right, I gotta right, keep right. So, um, <laughs> I, yeah, straight up, like I love all this. I walked around and got a good viewing of what you got here, and it does look all like hand done. Right. right so right. the authenticity of the small businesses is always great. You know what I'm saying? Like putting people um, quality on top shelf and giving them the opportunity to display right. themselves. So it's real good that you're offering that. And, and, all, and I always tell yourself, you're going to always want something. Like when people start a business, a lot of times they just think, boom, you started, then your money just start. Because no, every day you're going to wake up and want to advance your business. Because every Correct. day I get a phone call of a product I might not have that I have to start selling once I get a phone call. Correct. Uh, you know what I mean? You always want to grow and say, hey, I got this, but I want to get this, or this is the new thing, or this is the new thing. So it, it, it's kind of cool that way. It keeps you busy. Anything in the lounge you want to like? Uh, no, I'm going to let Miss Pooh walk through the lounge. You're going to let Miss Pooh walk through the lounge? Where's she at? Where's she went? Miss Pooh! Here she comes. She, she coming through the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> I like that go all the way around. There she go. Okay. Hey, welcome to Sassy's Galaxy Lounge. <laughs> Maybe that will work better for you. Miss Poole, tell us about the lounge. Walk us through here. I'm going to follow you. <laughs> okay, we have the main area with the pool table, back room, your bar area, TV around. We also have a flat sneak screen and projector that we play sports games. Also, VIP booth area. Oh, okay. VIP. Yeah. It could be VIP. Huh? Yeah. Okay. And then we're working on the outdoor patio, which is going to exit out this door and it's going to swing around the back in the okay. outdoor patio. So it's under construction right now. And that's pretty much the lounge here. We offer um, every Thursday is bike night. Yes, tell us Friday about what's going on. Friday is only do Friday. Okay. Saturday is 30 something Saturday, so 30 plus. And then I also offer private rentals, so you can come in and you can purchase and have your own private um, event. We also offer video shoots um, for the club. So, a 
lot of the guys come in and they play dominoes in this area, cards, chess. So it's more than just drink and smoke. You actually come and, you know what I'm saying, work your mind and do other things for other folks. Okay. What about Ed?